Hello, today I will show you some primality testing algorithms. Primality testing is an algorithm that tells us if a number is composite or prime. It has many useful applications, including cryptography. The algorithms we are going to see today are the naive prime testing algorithms. We are going to start with some quite simple algorithms today. I will implement them in Python for you. So let's um, make a directory here, and uh, this will be called uh, primality. In future videos, we will add more sophisticated algorithms to this directory. The goal of the first algorithm is to <coughs> print just uh, the first the first prime numbers. So what we will do is we will first do something quite simple. We will um, let's say we want to print the first um, prime numbers that are uh, below one hundred. What we will do is we will loop for witness in range or for a candidate in range 2 to n plus 1. So what we will do in this for loop is we will go through all the numbers up to n and we will test if they are prime. The way we'll do this is we'll, we will do something called trial division. So we'll take all the numbers that are below candidate And uh, we will check if the if the witness divides the candidate. If the candidate is divided by witness perfectly, then this means that the candidate is not a prime. And so we will break and we will no longer check for witnesses. If all the witnesses fail to witness the candidate's compositeness, this means that the candidate is now prime. And so in this case, we um, say print the candidate. So let's see if this works. Cool, um, this looks like the numbers are the prime numbers 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17. So it works. One uh, slightly peculiar syntax here of Python is this else in the for loop. And uh, this is only executed if the for loop was never broken during execution. So you can see that finding the prime numbers below a specific number can be done quite easily with such code. Now, uh, one thing to notice uh, is that we can optimize this code a little bit. And um, in order to do that, I would like to show you some uh, theorem. If we have a number that is the candidate, let's call it C, uh, if the candidate is prime, then it has no divisors. But if, it, if it's composite, then it has some divisors. Let's call them uh, alpha and beta it means it can be written as alpha times beta. And um, because this is multiplication, uh, this means that one of these two numbers will be less than the square root of c, or equal to the square root of c. And the other one will be larger or equal. Because if both of them were uh, larger, then the product will be would be larger than c. And if both of them were smaller than the square root, then both uh, then the product will be smaller than c. And so the idea here is just we just need to test for the smaller witness that divides it. So let's do that. We can say what we can say is uh, we need a flag this time. So we initially assume that the candidate is prime, and if we find that the candidate is not prime due to a witness, we mark it as non-prime. But um, notice that what we can do is, if the witness is above the square root of the candidate, then we can break early. And of course I can write this as witness times witness is bigger than the square root. But what I can also do, well, well let's see if this works actually. Uh, so if it's a prime, I will uh, print the candidate. And it seems to still work. That's good. Now I can also encode this in the range here. So what I can do is I can take the integer part of the square root and add one here. And so this tests up to and including the square root of the number uh, of the candidate as a potential witness. And in this case, I can return my uh, elegant else syntax of Python. Uh, and of course, I need to import my square root. 
you can see it's still working. So this is um, a simple algorithm. This is called uh, trial division. And it's the simplest algorithm in determining whether uh, a number is a, is a prime. And you can see uh, we can easily turn it into a primality test. Let's call this, uh, of course, we don't need this flag. So let's call this uh, is prime candidate. And now we don't need this for loop. All we need is this, and in this case, we can just return false. In this case, we can just say return true. And um, let's see if we um, loop for all the candidates in range 2 to 100. If the candidate is prime, then print them. So cool, we have created an isPrime function which tests if a number is prime, and this is exactly what a primality test is. Now let's see if we, uh, if we can approach it in a different way. Uh, again, I will try to print the first prime numbers. Uh, what I will, I will use this time is I will uh, keep my prime numbers in an array like this, and I will initialize it, let's say, with number 2. Uh, 2 is a prime number, and now I will take a candidate again um, from 3 and up to n plus 1, and again I need an n. And what I will do is, instead of checking all the witnesses that are below the candidate, uh, the, below the candidate's square root, what I will do is I will test only the prime witnesses. So, um, I will do this. And notice if a candidate is divisible by a composite number, this means that it's also uh, divisible by a prime number uh, that divides the uh, composite number that is, is the divisor. So let's write it down. If the candidate can be written in this form, where a and b are not candidate and not one, then if a is prime, then that means that this for loop will find it. But if a is not prime, then this means that a is composite, so it can be written as e times f. Continuing in this fashion, at some point we will reach some prime number e, which is also the, a divisor of Canada. Okay, so if the candidate is divisible by witness, then break. Um, and here we need the is prime flag. So initially we assume the candidate is prime, we go through the witness, if we find a witness that witnesses its compositeness, we break, and if no witness has been found, then we just print it. And of course, in this case we also need to append it to our list of primes, so that it can be used to check future candidates. Um, of course we will also optimize here. So if the witness um, exceeds the square root of the candidate, we can just break our Okay, let's see if this works. So this doesn't work. Let's see. Let's see what's the problem of this. So we start with the prime numbers. We loop through all the candidates from three and up, and we check for witnesses. Um, so three is correct in that it's uh, marked as a prime, but four is not correct. And let's see why four is included here. So uh, 4 should not be included because 2 should be a witness for 4. So let's print the witness. And let's print also the candidate. OK, let's go up to number 4. So a number 4 has a witness of 2, which should have witnessed its compositeness. So if candidate modulo witness, oh, oops, this needs an equals equals zero. So this was the mistake there. And let's see if it works now. And it seems to work. Okay. So uh, again, this is a trial division algorithm. It's uh, maybe slightly better than the previous one. And again, we can turn this not this uh, this listing of primes into a primality test. We can say we can remove this. And we could say is prime. Canada, but this time we will need to generate all the primes below the candidate in order to check for primality. 
So um, let's use this as a flag here uh, to avoid conflicting names. And in this case, we just need to go up to, uh, let's call this one n actually. We go up to n here, uh, little n because it's not a constant. And um, what we need to do in the end is um, check if the candidate is actually in the primes. So like this. So let's see if this works. Let's use all the let's print all the numbers from two to one hundred. And if uh, is prime Canada, oops, then we print the Canada. And I think we have a problem here with the number of candidate. Ah, okay, yes, this needs to be n. Uh, apparently, no number is prime because we haven't returned anything. Okay, so you can see this actually is a promontory test. It's not a very good one, but um, it does a job. Now, uh, let's move on to the, to the next one. Uh, let's see here. Let's keep this one just for analysis purposes. And I want to show you the Siebel-Ferragesthenes now. Siebel-Ferragesthenes is a classical Greek uh, promality testing algorithm. What it does is, um, again, it produces a list of, of uh, primes. And the way it does it, does it is it uh, keeps uh, track of these flags here, of the is prime flags true or false for each number. So let's call this uh, is prime. We make it an array, and initially we assume all the numbers are prime. Uh, let's say that n is 100, and we want to concern ourselves with all the not all of the numbers up to 100. So let's call it Eratosthenes. And uh, in in Python, this index means that this is an array of n truth values, and we also want to include the nth value. So we need n plus one values. Okay, so um, what we will do is we will um, again have a, a candidate prime and um, we'll take them to be from 2 to n and then what we will do is first of all check if the candidate is a prime like this. If it's a prime we can print it. And if it is a prime what we will do is we will use this as a witness to witness the compositeness of all the future numbers that we're going to see, all the multiples of Canada. So the way we're going to do this is we'll take the witness um, to be in this range, to be from 2 times Canada up to n, and we'll take it in Canada steps. So let's say n plus 1. Um, so let's explain what this does here. What this does is it uh, starts at two times candidate, and then it goes uh, in candidate steps. So it goes two times candidate, three times candidate, four times candidate. And what we will do is we will mark all the multiples of uh, candidate as non prime, so as composite. So uh, let's draw this. So what this does is it takes the numbers one, two, three, four, five. Let's take them up to 10. And, um, well, we will ignore, of course, uh, one, um, let's say two, and actually I, uh, yeah, so let's take two, and we first take two, it's not, it's not marked as composite, and what we'll do is we will erase all the multiples of two, and so you can see all the even numbers are crossed out. Then the next step is we'll take three, you can see it's not crossed out, so um, it's, a, it's a prime number, and we will use this to cross out the multiples of 3. So 6, it's already crossed out, we cross it out again, and then we cross out 9, and so on and so forth. And then we do we take 4, and 4 is marked as non-prime because it has already been witnessed as composite by 2. Then we take 5, and um, we can see it's a prime number, we cross out the multiples of 5. Then we take 6, which is um, a composite whose uh, compositeness has been witnessed by both 2 and 3. And then we move on to 7, which is a prime number. 
So you can see this finds out the prime numbers by just erasing the composite numbers, the future composite numbers. So let's see if it works. And you can see this also works. Um, okay. So we can also turn this into a Pomali test. We can have here uh, some n. And um, again, we go through the numbers and we do some erasures like this. In the end, if the number has been marked as composite, we will return false. Otherwise, we will return true. So that's the way it works. Let's see. Let's test it also. also in here this is not what I want okay let's try this and it seems to work so using the algorithms um, that I showed you which are all sieve algorithms they um, they are uh, creating lists of primes uh, we can check if a number is prime so we can create primality tests out of this uh, one small optimization that we can do here is uh, we can actually here go up to the square root of n as candidates because the the compositeness matrix here, the compositeness with well, um, the compositeness truth values will have been marked uh, by a witness that is up to the square root of n. So let's do this optimization. This is similar to what we did before. So we take the square root of n and uh, take its integer part add one and so uh, it still works and it's uh, slightly faster um, and uh, another another optimization a small optimization we can do is here we can start with the square of Canada because uh, well if, if Canada let's say Canada is a large number let's say Canada is a seven for example we don't really need to test two times seven three times seven five times seven because um, well, 2 times 7, for example, will already have been witnessed by 2. So all we need to do is start with, with uh, Canada squared, Canada plus 1 times Canada, Canada uh, plus 2 times Canada, and so on. So let's write them out. Uh, we will start with Canada times Canada. We will then move on to Canada plus 1 times Canada, and so on and so forth. While the original algorithm, it started from 2 times Canada, but... Um, if candidate is 7, well, you don't really need to test these, right? So you can just uh, oops, you can just cross them out, right? So we don't really need these. Okay, so this is a small optimization. Uh, let's see if it works. This also works. Okay, so these are uh, quite simple primality tests. You can you can make them quite easily. And uh, just one thing I wanted to, to observe in these cases is that the, uh, the various implementations are dependent on the value n directly in terms of complexity. So for example, the is prime, you will see that this for loop is running square root of n times at least, and it's doing things inside. So this is going to be uh, omega of uh, square root of n at least, right? In, in, in the worst case, it's going to be omega of square root of n. Uh, probably actually it's going to be worse than that, right? And um, in the case of the the trial division, again, you can see here there's a for loop and it goes up to a specific number n um, and it checks, right? So this for loop here, again, will be omega of n. Uh, and of course, it does, there's more things inside, so it's, it's worse than omega of n. And um, as, as I've mentioned in other videos as well, this um, complexity here that contains n is exponential in the size of the input. And a short explanation for, explanation for that is that the size of the input, the, the n here, is log of n, right? So if we set c to be equal to log of n, which is the size of the input, then in order to store this input in some sort of file, input file, we would need uh, a c number of, of bits. So um, this complexity here um, this looks polynomial, but it's not in fact polynomial, it's pseudo-polynomial, because in fact it can be written in this form, and this reveals that it's actually 
exponential to the size of the input. Similarly, for the square root of n, uh, notice that the square root of n is just n to the 1 half, and um, then this can be written as 2 to the c to the 1 half, which is uh, an exponential complexity. In future videos, I will show you some better primality testing algorithms that don't traverse all the previous numbers or some of the previous numbers. They just find out if the number is composed directly by checking, by performing tests on the number itself. And using these uh, smarter primality tests, we can actually achieve polynomial uh, complexity. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please thumbs up. And if you haven't already, do subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, leave a comment in the section below. Till next time, so long.